Okay, so, as you can guess from the title of this video, yes, I got Starfield. And this is one of the few rare games I've actually pre-ordered. I don't really pre-order games. I think I can count on one hand. Actually, I think it's been four times I've pre-ordered anything in my life, so... I, I usually wait till something drops in price, but Starfield was one of those kind of rare games where it's like, okay... I want to get a game system just for that. Yes, I know it's on PC. I'm not going back to PC. Yes, I started off with PC and I switched to consoles. Usually it's the other way around with gamers. I'm different and I just... I don't feel like going back to PC and the problems I've been hearing with some PC players trying to get Starfield around, it's like, yeah, I do not miss that at all. <laughs> but anyway, I have Starfield and it's like, okay, this is one of those games where they're so big, there's so much to do in them, that simply doing an hour play and a review of it doesn't feel like I'm getting my money's worth out of the entire channel process. With a game like this, you kind of gotta do a little bit extra things. And of course, one of the things I can do is first impressions. And yes, I know everyone's done first impressions, but I've kind of noticed some things that a lot of people have not been pointing out, a lot of people have been wrong about, and so this isn't exactly a review. I will be doing a review of Starfield. Yes, I know I said that about Cyberpunk 2077 with my first impressions of that game, and I've yet to do the review on it. It's a huge game. Every time I look at it, it's just like, do I want to commit to this right now? No. <laughs> so I'm trying not to do that with Starfield. Anyway, let's get into it. Okay, so something that I saw with so many videos, like everyone said this basically is that the first hours were boring they were slow it really takes a lot to get infested in this game i've heard some people say the first opening hours are terrible i've even heard some people say that you can't really start enjoying the game until you're 12 hours in and to all these people i have no idea what they're talking about now yes there are some aspects to this that aren't entirely as promised, i.e. the exploration. One of the ideas is you can just pick out a random planet, land anywhere on it, and just explore. From what I understand, that is like the worst aspect of this game, because it's not that fleshed out, it's kind of barren, there's not a lot to do, and you're, you're kind of just wasting time doing that. I have not done any of that. I've kind of stayed away from the whole exploration aspect. I have explored, but what I've done is I've done what certain people online have suggested. I've played the first three to four official mainline missions. I think uh, the mission gets to, like you want to play until you complete um, Into the Void or I, I can't remember the mission name. I'll, I'll put it right here. Uh, you want to complete that mission, and then you can kind of start running wild, going free, running around. And, like, I haven't been doing the exploration thing. I've been doing, like, all the little side quests that I picked up while playing the first three mainline missions. And I gotta admit, like, I've been enjoying the side content a lot more than the mainline missions. The mainline missions are okay. I don't think they're terrible. But... Like, the one side quest I've been playing right now has been the Vanguard side quest, where I won't really spoil it, but just imagine if you're experiencing, like, a story similar to that of Aliens, but instead of it being set on one location, one planet, it's taking place across the entire galaxy, and it's like, okay, this is kind of cool, I've really been getting into that storyline. 
And I think that's one of the cool things about Starfield is just if you're just doing the side missions and a main line mission every now and then, there is so much to be had. Is it a little disappointing that exploration has been reported on not being that great? No, because I've been having a lot of fun with this. Now, I will say I have some issues with this game. This isn't the perfect 10 out of 10 that so many people have been saying. And also, this hasn't been a complete piece of shit like a lot of other people have been saying. It's been kind of something in the middle. Like most games. <laughs> but, like, one of my biggest criticisms of this game is with the upgrade system. Now, typically in a game, you get a new upgrade point when you level up, and you put that towards, like, a trait, you know, makes sense, simple. But with this, they implement, like, a system that makes you have to work for it. So if you want to upgrade one more level, you have to, like, let's say with your boost pack, or your jet pack, or your, you know, your mando pack, as I like to call it. You get level 1, and then you have to boost jump 10 times during combat to be able to get to level 2. What I don't like about this is once you do all of that work, you boost jump 10 times, you don't unlock level 2 of that skill. You unlock the privilege of being able to buy that level with another skill point. That is so disappointing. It like just, it it, call, it really left a sour taste in my mouth. Either make it so that I have to pay for the level, or actually let me unlock it when I accomplish something. Which honestly, I think would have been a lot more satisfying, fun, and cooler if I only had put one point into that skill, and then I could just unlock it the more I used it. That kind of makes sense to me. Instead, it's you're working to unlock the privilege of being able to buy the next skill point level. And that's insulting to me. Another thing I don't like is there are instances that it feels natural to not have one, but there's other times this game desperately needs a vehicle of some kind. And I've heard some people say, well, just upgrade your boost pack. Uh, can I fly continuously like the Mandalorian when it's fully upgraded? I don't know the answer to this, but I'm pretty sure I do. And since you're going to answer what I'm pretty sure is the answer, this game desperately needs a vehicle of some kind. I'm not saying it needs to be like No Man's Sky, where you can have access to uh, car vehicle, a tank vehicle, flight vehicles, a motorcycle, a tie-in, um, but it needs something, okay? Like a bike, a, a motorized bike, kind of like something you saw with Oblivion, with Tom Cruise, or something kind of, you know, something kind of like that, just to be able to tool around in a little bit. You know, Death Stranding style. <laughs> I... I think that would be a huge improvement to this game. Another thing, I I don't want to say I don't like this, but I just, I feel like this game desperately needs and is going to get some quality of life updates. Little tweaks that make things, you know, operate for the better. Like case in point, when you trade items with one of your companions, you can equip them with different outfits, but when you do it, it looks like you're equipping yourself with it. And it's like, okay, guys, come on. How hard would it be to just show us the in-game model on a blue screen? Okay, like, that, that's simple. Little things like that. Now, something I do like is the fact that in previous games, I've only played Fallout 3 in terms of Bethesda titles. And in that game, like, when I got over-encumbered, I just went to a slow crawl that was just so tedious. And in this game, when I get over-encumbered, I can still move normally. I can still sprint. 
there's just certain factors dealing with your oxygen and CO2 that you want to be careful of and those deplete much faster. But the fact that I don't have to do that slow slog everywhere now to get items back, it still sucks, but it doesn't suck as much as it did in Fallout 3, and I really like that. Now, one thing that really sucks is the map system. Now, Grant, I understand you can't expect to have a map on a desolate world. Okay, I get that. But in the towns and cities and space stations, good gosh, we desperately need a map. I cannot tell you how much time I've wasted in New Atlantis trying to find the real estate shop. Like, someone said, oh yeah, by the way, there's, you can go down to this place and buy real estate now. It's like, please tell me where that is. And they don't tell me, and I was looking all over like, it's not there, it's not there. I mean, like, good luck finding anything in one of the cities or towns. Because it's like, I spent so much time on Mars trying to find a fender, and finally I found one after a trial and error. But it's like, okay, I, I saw some arrows pointing to like this sporting goods store. It's like, okay, where is that? Like it's on level three. I go down level three and all there is is a bar. And it's like, where is that? And I finally found it, but I wasted so much time trying to find it. Another issue I ran into, this is so aggravating. And no one's really talking about this. This is something that needs to be fixed in the quality of life updates. Is the fact that whenever you land on an alien planet, it doesn't do a good job telling you if, you know, <laughs> you can go outside without a helmet or not. Like, there'll be times I leave the ship and then just I start dying. And it's like, what's going on? It's like, oh, I'm just wearing regular clothes. I'm not in a spacesuit. So I go in the menu, I put on the spacesuit, and then I continue on the mission. And then next mission, I land on a planet. It's like, okay, I'm gonna put on the spacesuit, put on the helmet, the pack, the suit itself. I go outside, and my companion comes walking out in like just a regular t shirt. And they look at me like, you're a fucking idiot. Like, honestly, this game does not do a good job telling you if a plant is sustainable for your health or not. A simple little light when you get to the exit door would be enough. Like, hey, green light means you can go out without a suit and helmet. Red light means you should probably put some stuff on. Like, I know it seems like a little thing, but this is such an aggravating trait with this game. I, I always am like, can I go out without the suit on or can I leave the suit off? Like. You know, what is it? Do I need to put the suit on? Do I leave it off? And so, that desperately needs to get fixed. Another thing I really like is it's a bit steep to learn first, but I really do like the ship customization and building. It, you can't go nuts at first because it does cost you to customize stuff, but once you get a hang of working on the ship, it's pretty cool customizing it to your own needs. I'm still on the Frontier, the ship they gave you at the beginning. I haven't bought a new ship because I hear there's a lot of ships you can find and get for free. So I'm kind of waiting to get some of those. But I've been customizing the shit out of the Frontier. And like my Frontier, I'm like level 10 or no, I'm at level 11 right now and my ship was able to take out a level 39 <laughs> ship because I've just been customizing the shit out of the Frontier and everyone says that, yeah, you should get rid of the Frontier as soon as possible. You can do that or just start customizing the shit out of the Frontier as soon as possible. <laughs> and then one final thing that I'm a little disappointed in is it seems like it, it, it seems like I can't go into open space without a ch the ability to cheat or using mods. This is something that you can do on PC, but like playing on console, I have yet to be able to actually do like a spacewalk, even though I'm in a spacesuit. Like, honestly, nothing would happen to my character if they were to be out in open space. And yet, 
the game never allows me to do this. And this seems weird. Like, I'm thinking this is probably going to get fixed with an update. Or at the very least, one of the DLCs. Because Bethesda usually makes a couple of DLCs with each of their games. So, the one planned DLC, I don't think that's the only one. I don't think we're getting a Cyberpunk 2077 situation here. I think Bethesda does have several DLCs planned. And so I'm hoping that gets fixed because technically you can do a spacewalk since you have hundreds of different kinds of spacesuits in the game. And so I would like to see that. Anyway, so yeah, that's been my first impressions on the first couple of hours of Starfield. I've been having a lot of fun with it. I haven't been bored. I I've been really enjoying like the side missions and I haven't felt the desire to move on to something else yet, so I don't know, maybe I will actually get the review out in a couple months, because keep in mind, this is like a 300 hour game, <laughs> so, and a standard 15 to 20 hour game takes me a month to get through, so, even if I stick with this, it's going to be a while. Anyway, so that's been my first thoughts on Starfield. Have you guys been enjoying this game? What do you think of this game? Sing off in the comments down below. My name is Chris Rucano with 11 Hour Reviews, and that will be all for today.